of the Bible. I'll start with the book of Revelation at the end, since there's Christians like uh, Rusus, J. Rushduni, and others say that uh, we have to begin with the end and work backward from the future. So, yeah, the seven churches, they're all uh, non-Jewish and in Asia. It's interesting. And yeah, these churches are of different qualities and I'm not going to say a whole lot about these different churches. Yeah, I will mention the corrupt church here in Thyatira, which makes mention of the woman Jezebel. And obviously Jezebel was a a wicked woman in the Old Testament. And I've heard the commentaries on this passage here in Revelation I actually think that Jezebel was the bishop's wife. And I've heard a sermon by uh, Pastor Jason Cooley uh, who said that in some of these modern churches there are these feminists, these Jezebels, who are very religious women. And they may even be the leaders of the women's ministry program, or they might be one of the elders' wives. And they disrespect the Word of God. Um, you know, they blaspheme it and, you know, undermine their husbands in public and, you know, rebuke men and other things that they should not be doing, uh, usurping the authority of the church. And obviously the number seven has numerological significance for these seven churches, the seven seals, and the seven trumpets. And so from my Christian studies, uh, I've heard uh, interpretations that Nero is the Antichrist mentioned here in the book of Revelation. And I've heard other interpretations saying that the Antichrist is referring to the Roman pontiff and that the Roman Catholic Church is the great whore of Babylon. And there's more esoteric and astrological uh, reading of the Revelation, which says that the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth is referring to uh, the powers of the age of Pisces Virgo being overthrown. And there's this video on YouTube talking about the uh, Jewish perspective on Aquarius. And it actually says that this rabbi that you know, Aquarius will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there are many in Judaism that do not believe in an individual Messiah uh, because Judaism is more communitarian and so they see the Jews themselves as being uh, like the Messiah that there will be a messianic era and so uh, they would see uh, just as the word or the, the name Israel you know, at, at one time was for the individual Jacob, but then it became applied to the whole nation in the Hebrews. And so in this newer era, yeah, the name Jesus could just refer um, to the Jewish people as a group. And 
so we, we see the number 12 is very important here. The uh, 12 tribes. These people are sealed. And Jews are being re-engrafted. The lost tribes, I think that's what the Bible means. The New Testament, or Jesus speaks of the lost. I think he's referring to the lost tribes of Israel. And no one knows exactly who these tribes are, but obviously they're tribes. I mean, they're tribal people, like um, those natives and indigenous this people in Africa and Asia, the Americas, and, and so on. And I just wanted to bring up a, an idea here that if you're going to be in favor of the state of Israel and defend its right to exist, and Jews to this day, I mean, they still are, in a sense, tribal people. I mean, they're a small group. They're only... I think 15 million Jews in the entire world. Um, so if you're on their side, then you should be on the side of these other tribal people as well, the Native Americans and so on. And it's just a, a tension that it's fascinating that historically the Republicans, the conservatives, uh, and they were more on the side of the tribal people. <laughs> they wanted to liberate the slaves in the American South. They wanted to free the Jews from the Nazis. And historically, it's been the Democrats out in the West, during part of the United States, who've been all about greed and conquest and destroying uh, the native people. So, uh, and they've also tended to be less supportive of Israel, uh, American liberals. So that's uh, just uh, my opinion here, that if you're a Republican or you're a conservative, uh, then you should support Native peoples around the world. Um, and obviously, whether you're, getting back to Revelation, whether you're a Jew Muslim or Christian, um, we all know that in the end times, that the city of Jerusalem is going to be at the center of what happens. Uh, whether you're waiting for the Messiah the first time or the second time, whether you think the Messiah will be Jewish like me, or you think he'll be uh, on the side of the Christians or like the Muslims think that Jesus will come back as the Messiah but that he'll actually turn on the Christians and that he'll be on their side and uh, I, I'm sympathetic to that idea I th think that uh, he's going to make every path straight and he's going to be on the side of the weak and the poor, and the Christians are the rich and the powerful in our day, uh, but the Bible makes no mention of, you know, the Americas, um, it talks about this new heavens and new earth, this glorious <coughs> golden age in Jerusalem, in the Middle East, uh, but... So now I'll, I'll go back to the Old Testament here, starting with the book of Genesis. I just want to make a note on uh, verse 3 here. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And just to reiterate the importance of the word of God and his spoken word. So when he spoke, let there be light, then it happened. Yeah, but if you or I said, let there be light, probably nothing would happen. When Moses wrote down 
let there be light, nothing happens. So that's the difference between the Word of God and the written Scripture. Um, so, you know, Genesis begins in what would be the age of Taurus Scorpio. And so there's a lot of emphasis on the earth, you know, the creeping creatures and beasts. Um, and then there's the flood, so the destruction by water. That's in contrast to the end of the New Testament where the earth's destroyed by fire in, you know, the New Age, uh, as it's called these days. Uh, I always heard that term thrown around when I was growing up. New Age thought, New Age philosophy, New Age religion it never defined what it was. It means the age of Aquarius, Leo. So, you know, Leo is a fire sign, so there would be fire uh, during that time. And you know, electricity and and so on, that those things are all associated with Aquarius. Uh, yeah, universal, like, friendship, uh, equality, and justice, democracy. And uh, also, <clears throat> um, I'm going to mention the Tower of Babel here. And Part of an esoteric reading, uh, I would say that a lot of these images that we we have in the Old Testament, like the Tower, and Proverbs talks about the Fool, like all, all these different characters can be found in the occult or like the tarot cards. They have the Tower, the Fool, and so on. And, uh, it's insightful when you reread the Bible through that lens of tarot or astrology, as I'm sure um, in the ancient non Jews did, because you know, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, they were all into that kind of stuff. And so when they would read the Septuagint, or even the Jews would read <laughs> the Old Testament. Uh, and there have been a number of folks who've said that the 12 sons of Jacob, these like 12 tribes are symbolic of you know, the 12 uh, zodiac signs uh, and the, the sky being rolled up in a, a scroll in the uh, book of revelation that the stars tell a story like many actually think that the stars are angels and uh, yeah i wouldn't deny it and in revelation it says that a third of the stars in the sky were cast down that uh, they were swept by the tail of the dragon mean satan and that third of the stars would correspond to the third of the fallen angels. Now, going on to Book of Exodus, here we're starting to enter a time of judgment. We have these ten plagues, and so we're leaving the age of Taurus Scorpio, and we're coming to the age of Aries Libra. And so it's appropriate that we would have the ram sacrifice during this time, which God institutes. And in the Psalms, he said, do I desire the blood of bulls? That was from the age of Taurus, the bull. No, at this time, he doesn't desire that. And uh, there's a great emphasis on justice, like the scales of justice from uh, the sign of Libra. 
Uh, you know, we have the law of God given here in the Torah. The book of Leviticus, Deuteronomy. And yeah, there's yeah, many interesting things here in the Old Testament with the Levites and the priestly blessing and uh, may you live long and prosper for a long time. I never knew that uh, you know, Leonard Seymour from Star Trek and Spock when he would put his hands together kind of make that triangle that that's the Levitical blessing uh, from the Old Testament that live long and prosper and then of course after the law and the prophets are given come to the age of Pisces Virgo and so Jesus didn't write any scripture, as we know. The only thing that I see him writing in the disputed text about the woman caught in adultery is the fish in the sand on the ground. And that fish symbolizes that age of Adar, I'll call it, from the Jewish calendar, although uh, the calendar of the Jews used comes from Babylonian astrology. Um, so, yeah, there's emphasis on purity, like the Virgin Mary, and it's a feminine age, it's negative energy. Uh, so the church puts a lot of great emphasis on women, it, and there is a lot of negativity. There are jokes about the Catholic guilt and so on, the emphasis on sin. Uh, but you know, we're coming to a, a newer age of <coughs> Aquarius Leo or <coughs> age of Shavat, which has positive masculine energy. And in the Gospels, there is allusion to this age. In some ways, I mean, Jesus talks certainly about the fish a lot, and, and he shows compassion for people. So that seems like a, a Piscean thing. He's very religious, but he has characteristics of an Aquarius also, and it seems to allude to this future uh, astronomical era. Um, because he, he's always in the company of, of women. And you know, that's something that Aquarius is very much associated with. He's kind of a, a ladies' man, almost. And there's this passage in Luke where Jesus tells his disciples um, <laughs> to go to the, the upper room and you can tell him, yeah, the 12 to go to the upper room. And he says that, well, they ask him, what will be yeah, the sign of these things to come? And he actually, I mean, this might sound like sacrilegious to some, but Jesus actually tells his disciples uh, to practice astrology. He says they're to look for the signs, that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, just as the book of Genesis uh, begins, chapter 1. It says uh, the sun, the moon, they'll be given as signs for the seasons. And, and so Jesus says, you'll see a man carrying a pitcher of water, and they're going to follow him. And so the esoteric reading is that, well, that man carrying a pitcher of water is Aquarius, and he's going to lead them to the new age, and they're to, to follow him. And I'll just close by saying that in the Old Testament, 
and in the new to a lesser extent. There's a great emphasis on time and, and dates, like the, the new moon, the blessing of the new moon. That's not a pagan thing. The, uh, Jews have always blessed the new moon. They continue to do so today. Their calendar is based on the lunar cycle uh, rather than the solar cycle, which uh, the secular uh, calendar uses. Uh, the the non-Jews, the sun worshippers, I guess. Uh, Non-Jews are more patrilineal, I guess more patriarchal, maybe a little bit harsher in their approach to life. Or Jews have been matrilineal. They're softer. They're like more forgiving. Like God always gives his people an out and he tries to accommodate them. He, he says not to do this, but if you do it, then here's what you do to, to try to, to make it right. Um, so this year... 2019 is a leap year, so there are two months of Adar, and so the lunar year will actually be longer than the solar year this year for the Jews.